Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is about the food babe. The food babe. She has millions and millions of followers. Vani Hari, the food babe. So she was recently attacked on Gawker, Gawker.com, by a food scientist, Yvette D'Entremont. Uh, sounds French to me, a California-based food scientist or chemical scientist or whatever she works for. So she went on and gawk, gawker and just bashed Vani, the food babe. And the title of the article is, The Food Babe Blogger is Full of, Full of You Know What. And she goes in here, I'm going to read some of this article. It's just, it's such a shame. It's really just such a shame to see that, that, People don't realize sometimes that we are, we're totally misled in our food system. And we're just, it's a, a mind boggling that people can't make decisions and that they just fall into this mass mentality, this mass thinking. They just can't think for themselves and they'll do everything they can to defend their right to eat food, to take vaccines to smoke cigarettes, to keep drinking alcohol, though, they, 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 they will, it's just, it's mind-boggling. Let me read this article. Vani Hari, aka the Food Babe, has amassed a loyal following in her Food Babe army. The recent subject of my profiles and interviews in the New York Times, the New York Daily, Daily the New York Post, New York Magazine, Hari employs, implores that her soldiers to petition food companies to change their formulas. She's also written best uh, best-selling book to tell you that you can change your life in 21 days by breaking free of the hidden toxins in your life. She and her army are here to change the world. She is also utterly full of crap, is what uh, Yvette is saying. I'm an analytical chemist with a background in forensic and toxicology. Before working full-time as a science writer and public speaker, I worked as a chemistry professional, a toxicology chemist, and a research uh, analy uh, and in research analyzing pesticides for analyzing pesticides for safety. Analyzing pesticides for safety. Wow. I now run my own blog, Science Babe, dedicated to debunking pseudoscience that t tends to proliferate in the blogosphere. Reading Hari's site, it's rare to come across a single scientific fact. <laughs> she says she uses the word toxin all the time, and it goes on and on here. Um, talks about natural, organic, GMO fear. Uh, Hari's campaign last year against Starbucks pumpkin spice latte drove me to launch my own site. Uh, don't F with Bostonians pumpkin pie uh, spice anything. Um, so there's also saying a point here, but then the food babe has gone on record as saying there's just no acceptable level of any chemical to ingest ever. I wonder if anybody's ever warned her about the oh, about uh, dihydrogen monoxide, aka water. So the food babe and I last year were last year, her, her, myself, and three others were given top food activists in the country by, by a great online magazine, uh, One Daily Planet, named us five top food activists actually making a difference. And I was quite honored to be up there with the food babe in that. I, am I a food activist? I think I'm a food activist to a certain extent. But I want to talk about really an article like this, this is just so amazing because you go on and you find the comments in here. The comments on this on this Gawker article from that Yvette wrote are mind-boggling. There's thousands of comments on here saying, yeah, I hate her. I can't stand her. Thanks for proving her wrong. She's an idiot. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She got her degree from Google online. She, you know, they go on and just bash her up and down. And this is the mentality of, of, of people. And this is why this is why fast food exists. This is why these this is why these companies exist in giving us crap in our food and putting chemicals in our food and putting fillers in our food and putting corn syrup and and all these this is why these companies exist because they've brainwashed society to stand up for these companies. First of all, no matter if it's if it's a if it's a vaccine company uh, uh, whether whether it's prescription drugs, whether it's food manufacturing, fast food restaurants, they, they, they're, they're, they're all, they've all been manipulated somehow into 
putting out their information as their information is correct. You can pay for any information you want. Any scientist can prove anything. That, that, that's not the issue. A lot of this science is paid for science. To get real true independent science is tough. It's really, really tough. Now, Yvette here said, she, said she, she's actually worked for analyzing pesticides for safety. How is a pesticide safe? Are you like putting like cayenne pepper out there to get rid of bugs? Are you, are you doing natural things like that? Or are you making a chemical manufactured synthetic pesticide? And how is that safe? So when it comes to food, it's, it's not, you'd have to be an idiot to understand that, okay, here's a carrot, this is healthy. Here's a piece of Twinkies, here's a piece of cookie that has all these things that I can't read in it. But the things I can't read in here have been proven to be safe because it's on the generally recognized as safe list, the gross list. Or, well, the manufacturers wouldn't be using it because why would they be using it if it wasn't safe? And these people just think like this because it's in our grocery stores, because it's on our shelves, because it's in our food supply, because companies are making it, that it's totally 100% safe. And people are like, well, yeah, yeah, it's safe, it's safe, and, 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 and this chick is crazy. She's, she's like, doesn't know what she's talking about, and I'm glad that you nailed her because, man, because I like eating my french fries with cheese and, and gravy and my Twinkies and, and this and that and drinking my Cokes and having my beer. And it's just, it's like, I'm in utter shock reading that, that people are that stupid. First of all, these companies... These companies, these corporations that are giving us everything from vaccines to chemicals in our food to manufacturing food, all these companies are never held responsible for anything. They, they have no liability. They're not held responsible. They, there's, there's nobody going after these big companies. So here's the food babe who's going after these companies and several other people are going after these companies and they're out there making these campaigns. So on the other hand, the food companies have all have their masses of masses of armies out there that they've trained over years and years and generations and decades to think that the food they're giving you is 100% acceptable and safe. When I was in my early 20s, I was 24, 20, 26, 27 years old, 28 years old, I had I was on massive medication. I was on six different prescriptions. The doctor wanted to give me cholesterol medication at 28. I was already on all these meds. And I was eating the crap. I didn't I, I didn't I knew but I didn't know, right? I was one of those Americans that said well, yeah, I know that there's junk in this. I know that these cookies are fry hoffers, but you know, one cookie is not going to kill me. Moderation, one day is not going to kill me. Everybody uses that line. Well, this the, one day, one day, this this doesn't matter. You know, the problem that that's happening is here's the problem: you're not waking up the next day with six rows of teeth. You're not waking up the next day with your finger falling off. You're not waking up the next day to having cancer because of what you did the day before is directly affecting you. The doses that you're getting of this toxic food, of this poison food, of this unnatural food, whatever word you want to use, whether it's toxin, poison, unnatural, undigestible, unrecognizable, these foods, our body's very, very resilient. So after time, our bodies just have, a, have slowly fought this off, fought this off, and maybe a decade later, maybe five years later, maybe 20 years later, that's when we manifest cancer heart disease, all these other things, with strokes. And we're, we're, we're the, one of the sickest nations in the world, one of the sickest nations with the most expensive health care. And you have all these idiots online standing up. The, the mass population is standing up to these big companies. Every time you make a comment on this lady's blog, uh, on Gawker, the, the food science, the science babe, every time you make a comment, you're not supporting her, you're supporting the manufacturers that are poisoning us, that are giving us things that, that may be generally accepted as safe, that may be controversial, that may be full out non-controversial, just totally straight poison. It's like mercury. Mercury is toxic. The mercury that they're putting in vaccines is toxic. It's, it's so toxic it's measured in parts per billion, but they've convinced you that the trace amount that they're giving you is totally fine, right? So here's the food that we're giving. The trace amount might be totally fine, and they, they, they say this all the time. Well, anything in large quantities is toxic. <clears throat> you're right, anything in, in large quantities, okay? So if you drink a glass of water and you drink a swimming pool, you're going to have two different effects because you're going to drown, okay? You're going to drown in a pool of water. Drinking a glass of water is totally fine. Drinking eight glasses of water is fine. Drinking 20 glasses of water is fine. Drowning in a swimming pool is totally different. So yeah, 
Well, yeah. Well, I told you water's toxic because you can drown in it. Well, yeah, but you've got to get so much, so much of water or so much other things to actually have to happen to it. And it's not because the water's toxic itself. See, the water's not toxic. It's the way you're using the water is toxic, okay? When you're using chemicals in your food, when Twinkies is manufacturing something with chemicals, when these cereal companies are manufacturing GMOs, okay, it's toxic from day one. It's poisonous from day one. It's unrecognizable from day one. Now you're just accumulating that into your body over years and years and years, over a decade, over the next generation. So this is accumulating and accumulating and accumulating the effects. Again, you're not waking up the next day with six rows of teeth because you'd stop doing what you were doing if you woke up with six rows of teeth. That's obvious, but our body's so resilient that's not, that, that is not what's happening. All the food babe is doing is saying, hey, people, wake up. These companies are giving you crap in your food. But the thing is, what they do in America, they're not doing overseas. Let's, let's go to like vaccines. Gardasil is getting sued in country after country. Spain's a recent country. Japan banned it. Because these countries are saying, you're giving us crap. And we don't want this crap. And this, this stuff is dangerous and toxic and poisonous and life-threatening. So we don't want it. Mexico stood up and said, we're not taking high fructose corn syrup anymore. And what happened? The companies went in and sued Mexico. And Mexico ended up paying money. It's just, it's, so they say, well, you get your, uni don't trust anybody who gets their education online, right? I'm sorry, I don't trust my, my, I don't trust anybody that gets their education from an orthodox university. Because those universities are the ones that, are, that need the money. They're the ones that are susceptible to kickbacks, to funding, to sponsorships. They're the ones who get all the sponsorships from all the food companies, from all the medical institutes, from all the drug companies, the pharmaceutical companies. They're the ones that are taking the money. Don't think that a pharmaceutical company just gives money to a, to to the to, a, to any school out there, right? And you don't think they just give them money to say, we're nice people. No, you give them money and then you give them the curriculum that you want them to teach. That's how it started. It started with the Catholic Church way back in the 1700s when they started buying sugar plantations. They had to change the medical literature because sugar was frowned upon in the medical literature. This is 500 years old, people. Sugar was 400 years old. This was frowned upon. This lady in here is saying sugar's totally fine for you, okay? That she's saying sugar's fine. It's not toxic. It's not poisonous. This is a 500-year-old thing. People knew that there was a correlation between the amount, the sugar you ate, not the amount, but the sugar you ate, the refined sugar, not fruit, not apples, not bananas, not oranges, but refined sugar and your health. They knew there was a direct correlation. Catholic Church buys up sugar plantations. It's very, very lucrative. What do they need to do? We need to change the image of the way sugar is portrayed. So what do we do? We start sponsoring medical schools. And when we sponsor medical schools, we're going to start teaching the word quackery. And if you tell that your patients to avoid sugar, you're now uh, performing quackery. You're a quack. You're, this, is, this is how this whole thing happened. So when these companies go in, and industries go in and sponsor institutions, med uh, um, learning institutions, universities, there's an agenda for them to teach. They're, just not, they're not nice people handing over millions of dollars out of their own pocket. The American Dietetic Association is the worst by far. They take up to $5 million a year from Pepsi, Coke, uh, from the pharmaceutical industries. So anytime you see a registered dietitian and ADA credentials, they, their education comes from Coke and Pepsi and the pharmaceutical industries. That's much worse than Google ever could be. So there's a lot of great information on Google. There's a lot of crap information on Google. So when you say, oh, I'm going to get... You criticize somebody for getting information off of Google. Google's too vast to say, well, is that good information or is that bad information? It's, you can't say that's just bad information. Google is Google for a reason because you can search anything on there and you can find information on both sides, right? You can always find pros and cons of anything. So just because you're doing research on Google doesn't make you a bad person. If you're looking up bad research on Google, then you're going to get bad research. But if you're looking up good research on Google, because Google has everything there at your fingertips, you can find it. So it just drives me crazy when people say, well, you got that on Google, and, and, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to discredit you because you went to Google University. Oh, where'd you go? American Dietetic Association? You went to Coke University and Pepsi University and the pharmaceutical university? That's where you went. That's what you're going to learn. So I can learn more about nutrition. I can learn more on nutrition. You can learn more on nutrition if you went on Google and studied on Google versus somebody going to get ADA credentials. 
you can get a much better education, much more biased information, you can see the pros and cons, you can make your own judgments, and it's going to cost you zero. What's it going to cost Pepsi and Coke? It's going to cost them business. It's going to cost them their finances. It's going to cost them revenue. It's going to cost them bottom line. And they can't afford that. None of these guys can afford bottom line decreases. So they go in there and they bribe these places. They downright teach what they want to teach. The, look at the USA Food Pyramid. That was done by special interest groups. What we were taught to eat for decades has been totally wrong and off base because you had to have every... You had to have every industry in there getting their hands in the milk industry right the milk and dairy industry the meat industry you have to get all these industries in there we need a piece of the pie we need a piece of pie how do you get a piece of the pie money 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 you buy you buy state senators you buy legislators you buy you buy, you convince, you lobby. You join groups like ALEC, American Legislative, Legislative Exchange Council. You should get laws passed that are specifically for you and your purposes. I know this is a rant. I know I'm going on. It's just, it's just, reading this article just drove me crazy just because people are just so blindsided. They look and say, well, yeah, I knew she was full of crap. I knew that. You, you, she's full of crap because you don't want to change what you're doing because you like eating french fries because you like going to McDonald's because you don't like cooking food for your kids you like going to get pizza that's filled with trans fats white flour, white sugar cottonseed oil, corn oil you like, you like dairy that's, that's pumped up with bovine growth hormone <clears throat> you like all that you don't want to change this is just a reason for you not to change this is so you can justify to yourself I don't have to change what I'm doing. And the food babe is totally wrong, and so are these all these other food activists out there, and so are all these other whistleblowers out there. They're all wrong. See, Marcus? They're all wrong because this lady who's a chemist who tests who who analyzed pesticides for safety is the one who said so. First of all, when she wrote, when she started this stuff, she was on the she's on the payroll for, for these companies. She's on the payroll for these companies. How fair of an objective do you think? She is paid to prove that pesticides are safe. That's her job. Now, you, and you're con most people are convinced that yeah, this isn't this is an adequate professional I can listen to. Oh, she has credentials. Oh, this person has dietetic credentials. This person is a dietitian at a hospital. She must be correct. He must be correct. It's a bunch of BS. A whole system's BS. And then you go back and look at Google. Well, Google's a problem because you can search at Google and anybody can write a blog and you can be a blogger and you're going to alarm people and scare people and this and that. You need to be scared. We need to be scared. We're the unhealthiest nation out there. We need to be scared. Our medical costs are going up. <clears throat> Our health is going down. We're not getting anywhere. We've been fighting cancer for a century. We've been fighting all these diseases for a century or more and nothing's improved. Nothing has improved in this. There might be you might there might be recognizable improvements here. You might say, oh well, cancer. This this works great for cancer now. More people, more people are cancer free. The reason why more people are cancer free might be because they've changed the definitions of what cancer is, or the definitions of what AIDS is. They changed definitions to make it. So now you used to have to be 10 years off of chemo and cleared. Uh, and clear of cancer to be cancer free and be you know cured of cancer from chemo now it's maybe five years i'm not sure if that's the specifics but that's how they do that they they shorten the times it's one thing like trans fats we all know trans fats are bad it's, it's no it's it's no it's no secret that trans fats are evil that they're poisons but you'll have scientists out there that will prove to you otherwise that trans fats are totally fine because they're going to pay and get the science that they need to prove that specific point. And they can do it. It's like wine and resveratrol. Resveratrol is a powerful antioxidant. I take it every day, but in a pill form. And people say, you need to drink wine because it has resveratrol. Resveratrol is a fountain of youth antioxidant. It's the best ant antioxidant out there. You're right. You do need the resveratrol, but you don't need the wine. Try grape skins, try grape seeds, try grape juice, try fresh grapes. You'd have to drink 25 glasses of wine to get the maximum, a good dose, a therapeutic dose of 250 milligrams of resveratrol. It's 25 glasses, you're gonna be drunk. You're gonna be wasted. You're gonna have other health implications just to get your resveratrol. So that's what they do. They take one component of something. They can take one component of trans fats. They can take one component of cottonseed oil. They can take one component of whatever it is. One component of white flour, one component of this and say, one component of this drug, one component of this and say, this is 
the shining star of this, this product. So you need to eat this. You need to keep eating this, eating this, you eat this much to get a little bit of this good thing, right? That's such the backwards way of looking at it. It's totally backwards. It's like GMOs. They say, well, no longer do we have to spray pesticides on the crops, duh, because the pesticides are in the crops. It's easy to justify and say, well, we're not spraying pesticides anymore because the cells of the plant are toxic. They're bred with, they're spliced with, the genes are spliced with the pesticides. So yeah, it's no, it's no, anybody can say, well, I don't have to spray anymore because you don't have to because the plant is the best of pesticide itself. But this is what they justify. They justify these things like this. We're saving the world, less pesticides. So if the GMO companies are touting spraying less pesticides, and this lady's touting, well, pesticides are safe, why are GMO companies in business? See, everything's a clash out there because they're, they're all there to prove a single point. They're, the only point that they're really proving is to their finances, to their bank account. That's the point that they have to prove. And they're willing to risk your health, our health, the American health to do so. And guess what? I'm going back to this again. Nobody holds these people accountable. Nobody holds them accountable. They, they, these are corporations. They don't go to court. They don't get sued. The, the, C, the CEO that doesn't go to jail. No, these are very rare cases where the actual corporations where these people are actually held accountable. So they've, they've convinced most of the people out there and the people that are writing on these blogs and the people that are making comments that this is totally fine and they've, they've got the whole system just screwed up. Now, sure there might be ingredients that you can't understand that might be okay for you, that might be good for you, this or that, but the real bottom line is if you can't understand ingredients you shouldn't be eating it, right? An apple doesn't come with an an organic apple does not come with ingredients. An organic pear, organic carrots, parsley out of your garden, beets out of your garden don't come with an ingredient list. If you go hunting, if you're hunting venison, that doesn't come with an ingredient list. These 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 don't these, this is what it is. This is the pure food. Anything beyond the pure food is questionable. It's been altered. And sometimes it's like, it's not even the food itself that's bad, it's the way you cook it. By forming acrylamides, by, by okay, some people might say, oh, grass-fed steak or, or steak is not really the issue, beef's not really the issue, but then they, they char it and they grill it and they blacken it. And it's the, or they fry potatoes, right? Potatoes aren't the issue, but it's the French fries are the issue. So it's the end product. It's not the beginning product that goes into it, it's the end product, it's how you're cooking it. That has the most detriment on your health right there is the way we manufacture and process the foods. So it might not be the actual one chemical that's in it. It might be the chemical in a reaction with the process of frying it, baking it, or adding it with something else. Making, making who knows what kind of effects these are making on our body and our system. Because we're, again, we're not waking up the next day with six rows of teeth. It's not happening, but if we were, we would be scared. We'd be really scared and we'd be like, oh crap, I've got to change what I'm doing right now. But there's no incentive for us to change. There's no incentive because the food manufacturers have given us the taste. They, they've given us the taste, the, the mouthfeel, the texture, that feel good, the endorphins that we, that we like and we strive for because they know the chemicals that go into our food. They know that, okay? They've made it easy for us. They've made it cheap for us. They've made it convenient. They've provided everything for us. So why would we want to change? Your, your kids are screaming for food. Pull into the drive-thru at McDonald's. Pull, pull up in your freezer room. Pop in a, a pizza. Your microwave. Throw something in your microwave and heat it up for your kids. Heat it up for yourself. It's all good. Because they've built a society of feeding us around a lazy society. They built a way to feed us because we're a lazy society. And that's what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. You go to the grocery store and you can tell. You can just tell who's healthy just by looking at their, at their shopping carts, okay? I go to the grocery store and I don't see people loading up on veg, right? Loading up with fruits and veggies and get to the conveyor belt and they're putting out fruits and veggies and this and that. Then all of a sudden you'll see somebody like throw out like boxes of prepared stuff like Jamaican beef patties, French fries, uh, Twinkies, a couple gallons of milk because they think they need their calcium from milk and eggs and all this cheese. So is the food bait full, full of crap? I think she's just trying to help people. She's trying to educate people. And you know, you don't have to listen to her. That's your choice, you don't have to listen to her. But to, to sit up there and, and, and criticize her for what she's doing, now that's a totally different scenario. I mean, if you don't like what she's doing, just leave her alone. You keep eating your crap, you keep eating your junk. Someday you might go to her and say, hey, she was right, or someday you might go to her and say, hey, I need that information. But man, once you, once you, 
once you start writing stuff online and once you form that opinion in this and that, it's just, it's that much harder to realize later that she possibly could have been right on maybe one thing, two things, half the things, or everything. So instead of bashing her, just ignore her. Just ignore her. She'll go away in your life. And if you need her, go look her up. Find her. Who, whatever, holistic nutritionist, whatever, food activist, whatever. I know through me, changing my diet made a world of difference. I got off all my medications. I was a totally different person within 30 to 90 days. Totally different person. My asthma spray I threw out, everything I was on was gone. 100% a totally different person health-wise, spiritually wise, everything. It transformed my whole life by watching the foods that I was eating 15 years ago. I'm doing the same stuff the Food Babe talked about 15 years ago. I was looking at all my ingredient labels. I was being very conscious. Um, I eventually went to become a vegetarian, become a vegan, but I just watched and watched and watched everything and it just was really frustrating to see that I had been poisoned my whole life, basically, from all this crap food. It was, I, I, was, I was in shock. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.